Welcome back, my friends. Nice to have you here on Will EduTech. And this is another edition in our CSEC exam pass paper questions and solutions. Now, since we have completed the May 2011 paper, we are now starting off with the January 2012 paper. And this is section one, question 1A. And we're going to be looking at part one and two in this video. Now, these questions would generally fall under the topic computation on the syllabus. Now, quickly, let's just pull up the screen and get into it. Uh, that should be good enough. Let me just leave it there. Okay, that should be good. Now here they have given us uh, some mixed numbers. You call these kind of fractions complex fractions. Okay, now here we have one and three quarters all squared divided by three and a half and they're stating here that we should express our answers as a fraction and usually that's a fraction in its lowest term and that's a easy three max so quickly let's just look at it now here let me just rewrite the problem they are we, are, we were given one and three quarters okay all squared and that's all squared and that's divided by three and a half okay now basically I'm just going to call this a name I'm just going to name it a okay you for alpha you could name it F for Fred or C for Carl it doesn't really matter okay now if you notice this is looking ugly so what I'm going to do I am going to convert my mixed numbers because when fractions are written like these these are called mixed numbers so I'm just going to simply convert my mixed numbers to improper fractions and how do I go about that now this little arrow means that implies means when I leave here this is what I'm gonna get so to convert these as improper fractions I must take the 4 in my denominator so I'm taking that 4 and I'm going to multiply that by my whole number which is the 1 there okay and then I'm going to add the 3 in my numerator to that okay my friends and all of that must go over my 4 in the denominator now if you notice carefully all of this was squared so I have to square this okay I have to ensure that this is also squared okay because it was squared there all right now I am dividing now my friends by three and a half so we're going to be doing the same thing here I'm going to take the two in my denominator and multiply my whole number so I'm going to say two times three and I'm just going to put that in a bracket again and I'm adding my numerator to that so I'm adding one and if you're not sure about how to calculate um, fractions or how to treat them you could always check out our playlist on fractions we have a bunch of exercises there okay now if you notice in my denominator I have a two there so I'm just going to put everything over two so let's just quickly simplify that now guys uh, quickly here I would have a four times one is four and when I add three to four I would get a seven so I am left with seven over over 4 but if you notice all of that was squared so I have to square this okay so let's square that okay now if you notice that I'm, I'm dividing by 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 will give me a 7 so here I have a 7 over 2 okay guys now this implies let me just put back my imply sign that 7 over 4 all squared and I could just rewrite that in another way quickly for you really I'm saying 7 is multiplying itself two times it's not 7 twos no that's very important it's 7 multiplying itself two times and that is all over 4 is also multiplying itself two times because what you should note is that everything was in a bracket so it simply means that everything is being squared both my numerator and my denominator now this is being divided by 7 over 2 but we know that when we're dividing fractions okay guys the one at the front remain the same and we could always flip the fraction at the back when we change the division sign to multiplication so to divide fractions is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal so I'm just going to say 2 over 7 if you notice I just change my sign to multiplication and then I flip the fraction at the back now basically I can cancel out I can say 2 into itself goes once and 2 into 4 goes two times okay so really I can say 7 into itself also goes once and 7 into itself goes once so 7 would 
cancel 7. So really, my friends, I'm left with 7 times 1 is 7 times 1 is also 7, this one over here. So in my numerator, I have a 7, and that is all over. 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 1 is also 8. So my answer is 7 over 8, and that's my answer okay and that, that that's pretty much it let me just pull this up a bit okay so that's my answer all right let's get into part two quick now in part two my friends they have given to us the root of 0 0.0529 and we're adding 0 0.216 to that and they are asking us to express our answers in standard form okay and that's another easy three marks so let's quickly get into that so here let me just rewrite the problem i have a the square root okay the square root of zero and let me just let me just let me just erase that a bit yes good so we have the square root okay of 0 0.0529 all of that is under the square root plus 0 0.216. Now, basically, let the, the, we, we, we were given instructions that we can use our calculator. So let's just quickly take out our calculator. Let me just clear this quickly. Now, basically, what I have here is 0 0.0529. Okay, and I'm taking the square root of that, and my answer is 0 0.23. So let's just get into that. So this implies, meaning when I leave here, this is what I'm going to get is 0 0.23. Okay, now to that I'm adding 0 0.216. Now this is pretty easy. I can just simply use the place value system to do my addition. And if you're not sure about what I'm speaking about, you can always check out our videos on the base 10 system of numeration, where uh, you're taught some little basic concepts in math as it relates to the place value system. So here, what I'm saying, I have a 0 0.2 two three and I'm adding to that zero point two one six okay so I'm adding let me put my addition sign so just draw my line if you notice there isn't anything over the six some persons for some persons who are not comfortable with that you could always put a placeholder okay so I'm saying six plus zero that will give me a six I'm saying four three plus one will give me a four and I'm saying two plus two also will give me a four my decimal point should should be under my point right there and I can just simply bring down my zero as a placeholder now my friends that's my answer okay so let me just make a note of that this is my answer when I take the square root of of 0 0.0529 and I add 0 0.216 to that. Now, if you notice here carefully what they're asking us to do, and let me just split the screen right here a bit. They're asking us to take now our answer. Let me just change the color. They're asking us to take our answer, which is 0 0.4. 6 and write our answer in standard form. So let me just make a quick note here in in standard form in standard standard form okay in standard form now I'm going to take my answer which is 0 0.4 four six and I'm going to show you how you write this in standard form now when writing a number in standard form a single digit must be before the decimal point and that digit must be a non-zero digit okay so that digit can be one two three four five six seven eight or nine any one of those digits okay so simply what I'm doing here my friends I'm just going to adjust my decimal point so that I can have a non-zero digit a single non-zero digit before my point okay now if you notice a zero is there so I don't need that so if to get a single non-zero digit before the point I would have to move to my right okay so here I'm just going to jump to my right once okay so now my point would be in between the two fours there so in standard form okay in standard form I would have for my answer zero well I wouldn't have a zero there I have I would now have a four in front of my point so I would have four point four 
6. Okay, when write a number in standard form, it's always times 10. And now what I'm going to be looking at, I'm going to be looking at how many times I jumped to get a single digit before my point. And I have jumped once. Okay, if you notice, that's just one jump. So any amount of times that you have jumped, that that amount of times must go in the power of 10. Now, if you move to the right, that power is negative. Okay, if you had moved to the left, it would be positive. Okay, so since I moved to the right, it's negative one. And that's it. Now, if you're not sure, okay, well, let me just place my answer. If you're not sure, my friends, you can always feel free to ask a question and we'll get back to you as soon as possible or even leave a comment. Okay, bye-bye.